Daniel got this $8,000 greenhouse, $1,600 out of pocket. Good job, Daniel. Daniel, here we are at this fabulous greenhouse. Okay. Oh wow, are you allowed to pull up those carrots? Yeah, that's more like Emily, we allowed to pull up those carrots? Yeah. They don't look like they're ready yet. Come with me, Jonah. Come on, Lily. What's this? Lettuce. Lettuce? Okay, here's a good one. No, no, be careful. It's not so common, but it's absolutely delicious. Bok choy, good one. I'm proud of you for doing that one. What's this? Tomatoes. What's That's this? My turn. Uh, a sunflower. Good. What's these? Mm, green beans. Perfect. Boy, how do you know all this? Don't know. Okay, what's this one? Cucumber. Pepper. Pepper. Uh, uh, pepper. pepper. No, this one's tough. No. I know it. Beets. Close. Beets. Mustard. No. No, it's not Beets. mustard. Turnips. Turnips. I mean turnips. Oh, yes. I should have known. They're watermelon radishes. Oh, oh, I would not have guessed that. Very similar to a turnip. I wouldn't have guessed that. Last year, the, the watermelon radishes that I grew were a dark red. There we go. Yeah. Can I eat oh, that? Oh, wow. Beautiful. Wow. Eat, eat. I want to eat, eat it. Let me clean it off a little bit. You got to love it when the kids are clamoring to eat the veggie. These green beans are delicious. What do you think? It's good. Not as exciting as you thought? Mm -mm. Not as exciting as you thought? I mean, it's pretty. You going to eat that, Houston? Yes. Do you like it? I haven't tried it. Okay, try it. You can eat all the spinach you want over there, buddy. Yeah, last year was the first year I'd ever seen a watermelon radish. But they're the prettiest little That is a beautiful thing. I mean, well, you know, most veggies. people grow just little small breakfast style radishes, the little red ones. Like yeah. But they're white fleshed. Which are just neat. Gross. You don't want it? He'll tell us the truth, man. won't he? I like them. <laughs> are you chilly? I think he's going to display how easy it is to open this greenhouse. I want to tie my strings real quick. These are just kind of extra, extra strength to, to keep the vent closed in the wintertime. In the summertime, I don't have to tie the strings. Did you assemble this yourself or did a team come do that? No, I didn't build it myself. There's a local guy in Kingston. Mm -hmm. um, he's built greenhouses for probably a high tunnel. This is technically a high tunnel, not a greenhouse. He would get on to me if I called it a greenhouse. Um, he's built them for, I want to say, 40 years maybe. Not this style. So this is a, the guy's name's Leon Sloan. He's got Leon's greenhouses in Kingston, Oklahoma. And this is a, a design that he came up with to cool a greenhouse or a high tunnel. This ridge vent. Let me loosen it up a little more. It just splits the greenhouse right open. In the thought process, oh, wow. heat rises. Yeah. And in the summertime, you come in here, you can raise the sidewalls a little bit, and it causes like a chimney effect. And there's ba and then it's basically neutral at that point. Yep. Go for it. You gonna try the banana pepper? No, I'm a little worried. Why? I, mean, I like these green beans. They're really good. Like whatever beans. Are you afraid it's gonna be hot? Oh, it's just a sweet pepper. Yeah. No, it's not hot. She don't believe you. <laughs> I don't. She's afraid of you, Daniel. Well, if he has. Jalapenos right here. I have some jalapenos, but I kept those away because if I keep you them didn't close wanna, together, they'll they cross-pollinate. Yeah, the banana spicy. peppers will start getting hot by the end of the season. Mm. You like it? Mm -hmm. How does a homesteader go and get a commercial greenhouse like this? Several people had told me about the NRCS. Uh, it's a soil conservation program through the government, the federal government, and they have a, a program for a high tunnel. So I filled out the application and went through all the steps and after, I don't know, six or eight months, um, I got approved and it's a cost share program so they don't pay for all of it, but it definitely helps. And you don't have to get one this size. Obviously a small homeowner could get one that's a little smaller and it wouldn't cost you near as much. How much did you pay for this? Um, I believe it was close to $8,000, total. That was the total cost. Total cost, yes. And my out-of-pocket was about $1,500. <laughs> so the 9 to 5, a state trooper. State trooper when I have to be. And then this <laughs> on the side. Part-time farmer on the side. How do those uh, make sense together? Well, to me, it started off as gardening as a hobby, I guess, seven or eight years ago. I started growing a garden and... It just the 
the, the ability to, to feed my kids food that we grew ourselves. It started off, the main thing was we canned our own green beans the first year. And my kids hated green beans until we grew those and ate them. And the kids just were, they just loved them. So it kind of grew from there. The gardening thing kind of turned into more of a, as, as yeah, it was to feed my kids and to show them that they can grow their own food and it tastes different than what you get at the store, but it's a stress reliever. This, this right here is kind of like, I, I, it's hard to explain my job. It's hard to show results. So I can go out and work all day and come home and it, I can't see results. Like a house builder could say, this is what I did today. Well, the greenhouse and the garden is kind of like my stress reliever from the real world and we get free food and I can see the results at the end of the day. This how I get in? Yeah. Yeah. I'm the dead man. Clear out. Oh no. Oh. 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 Okay, I'm the dead. Oh. 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 Do I have to get everybody? No, no get everybody first. Oh. Oh. You got me. Where's your shoes? There they are. Hop them on. It's a big one. I see a really cool chicken system in the making here. Putting a hay bale down in a certain area. The chickens scratch it out. Look, look how they've put it out as mulch. Okay, chickens scratch that out. They've weeded, there's no weeds in here. Be starting your plants in a greenhouse like that. Move the chickens out come spring. They've spread the hay bale around. Move the little mulch out of the way where you wanna plant plants. Drop the plants in there, move the chickens out to the next job. This is what the soil was. Look how hard that is. Hard and dusty. This is what it's becoming. Oh my gosh. This is where I rich, had a bale last compost. year. And it's just. Oh my. I mean, Look at that work the beautiful chickens do. I can dig down with my hands four or five Holy inches smoke. easy. Beautiful system, guys. Hard pan, hard soil right here. <laughs> Bring on the spoiled hay. Bring on the chickens. Who cares if they even lay eggs? Come on, there. Wow. Come here, boy. Those are some big goats. Come on, goats. Watch out, bear. Come on, bear. Come on, bear. This ain't a squirrel. That's my mic. See? Bear thought this was a, a uh, squirrel or a possum. I've been working with her quite a bit. I'm trying to teach her to You're do You ready tricks. for your circus act? <laughs> oh, come on. Stand up. Don't jump on me. There you go. Now this is a big goat breed. What is this? Most of them are Kikos. Kikos are a, are a meat goat that were originated from New Zealand. Huh? They're a lot more hardy. Um, around here the most popular meat goats are boar. Those are the white goats with a red head. Yeah. But Kikos are very um, disease resistant. They're very parasite okay. resistant. You don't have to trim their hooves. Nice. And they can just do well on their own. Um, I feed them very little actually. Um, most of the year they're turned out on brush and they just browse. This breed does really, really well in the timber, in the brush. Okay. Let's go see a before and after. This is before, this is your typical forest. Got plenty of underbrush. Okay, and this is where the magic happens with goats. And this is where we want to get goats, similar to that. Uh, raising them for meat, using them to begin clearing for pasture. Look how clear it is in here, guys. Okay, I feel like I'm with Granddaddy YouTube right here. Been YouTubing long before I showed up onto the scene. Well. Six years, started with sharing hunting videos with friends. Now getting a little more serious, showing a little bit more about Homestead. Yeah, 
Tell well, us. The last two years is really when we've really taken off. Before that, it was just kind of the, the beginnings of sharing a few things with friends. But over the last two years, we've really tried to grow our channel. It's slow, but we've got some awesome subscribers, a lot of people that have been with us since the beginning. So our channel is Arms Family Homestead. Um, we do, it's basically, it's not just a homestead channel. It's not just that. There's some vlogs, it's some how-to stuff, all about the gardens and the goats. But most importantly, it's, it's me trying to teach my kids, get these kids interested in growing their own food and just being in the outdoors, hunting, fishing, and showing them that, that there's a better way of life than just sitting in front of a TV.